Peace, world majority brothers and sisters. It's a cold day in hell, and nothing's better than a nice icebreaker. Now that midterm elections are over, it's time, you guessed it, to organize. Organize around people's short-term basic needs and long-term political aspirations. But some still want to pay lip service to elections, elections, elections. There's talk all over the media about the Latino wildcard vote for 2012. How the Latino vote saved Harry Reid. And why political pimps must not make the general pitfall of being blind to brown. But all of this discussion illuminates one central fact. Latinos find ourselves without a concrete agenda and demands. And most importantly, without a movement independent of just voting Democrat or the candidate who claims it will treat us just a little bit closer to human. We're not controlling our political destiny. Others are determining it for us, and we're just going along for the ride. Even worse, if you're caught in the difficult position of voting Democrat or deportation, like those of us who are in Arizona and have Megaton evil like Jan Brewer to deal with, we often choose Democrat without considering that the very dichotomy between Democrat and deportation is false. Let's take Russell Pierce's recent analysis of the situation in order to make a bigger point. How much did 1070 shape this election here in Arizona? I think significantly. I think out of fairness, the governor would have to admit that, that it wasn't for 1070, she wouldn't be elected. I think other folks ran on 1070. Nationally, they ran on 1070. I have, I have three governor candidates call me, you know, to do calls for them and to support them because of 1070. Not because of trust of Pierce, but on the face of 1070. Well, Pierce isn't alone in that belief. A preliminary analysis of exit poll results shows more than three-fourths of people who strongly support the new law favored Brewer, while Goddard won over nine of ten voters who strongly opposed the new law. He also won over nearly three-fourths of Latino voters. If 1070 was the lift Brewer needed to bring home the election, it only stands to reason that one out of two things was going to happen on the Democratic side. Either one, the Democratic candidates would all align themselves on the right side of history and justice and categorically denounce SB 1070 and all other hate legislation and then swear upon their great-grandmother's graves and their offspring's trust funds to repeal it once in office, which would then put them on our side. Or two, the Democratic candidates would dilute their opposition to SB 1070 and wax poetic about finding solutions to border lawlessness and illegal entry into our state, thereby making their message not nearly as racist as Tea Party types, but at least making themselves palatable to the same voting bloc that takes genetic experiments gone entirely wrong like Jan Brewer seriously. Perhaps now we can focus on effective steps to fight against border crime and keep our families safe. Now we can focus on steps like the ones I've been taking to go after border criminals and cut off the cash that flows to the drug cartels, the ones that smuggle thousands of people into the United States every year. Now we can start making smart decisions about immigration, going beyond the sound bites, the fear monitoring, and the political stunts. Put simply, the Democrats took the Republicans' lead and in the end still criminalized the migrant community. Felicia Rodellini herself even said SB 1070 doesn't go far enough, and Terry Goddard's opposition was never as fiery as circumstances obligated it to be. And perhaps the worst of the worst betrayals, Stephen Lemons has pointed out that Don Bivens, chairman of the Arizona Democratic Party, is a partner at Snell & Wilmer, the same law firm that is defending SB 1070 on behalf of Jan Brewer and the $3.6 million in donations that she has received. Let's repeat that. Don Bivens, the chairman of the Arizona Democratic Party, is a partner at the same law firm that is defending SB 1070 in court. If I was a Democrat of color, I would feel slapped in the face and be looking for alternatives. If I was one of those dedicated volunteers registering people to vote in the Arizona sun for eight hours at a time, I would feel slapped in the face and be looking for alternatives. What is the five fingers? Say to the face! <laughs> what? Slap! The game is obviously rigged from the beginning when the wolf disguises himself as a sheep. So maybe it's no mystery why the Democratic message was tame and even sometimes approving towards SB 1070. Therefore, now that the Democrats have lost, well at least everyone except for Raul Grijalva, it's time to take this fight higher because the stakes have now been raised. With governors like Brewer, legislative Don Corleone's like Pierce, 
historical whitewashes like Tom Horn, and Gestapo like Arpaio at the heads of state and county power, the politics of the radical right wing will be expressed with nary a dissenting elected voice challenging them, which is why we have to. First of all, it's illegal, it's illegal to attend higher ed under federal law. And secondly, if you're in the country illegally, we don't use taxpayer dollars. Actually, um, just to answer that, the taxpayer, the dollars, or the money that's used for education comes from taxes that you pay when you buy things it matter, and when taxes. you rent. Well, actually, undocumented people who You can't who, support who live, law breaking. You will they, not, cannot. You understand me? I understand, okay. but I, I, I got here when I was, law. I've been here since I was you know a what? child. I yeah, didn't know I'm going to talk about law. you or just one little individual. You have to have an overall platform. Okay. You know what? As an American, we're a sovereign nation with a sovereign state. have an obligation I to understand. protect this state. But you okay, didn't. Well, you, I did, you didn't. I'm going to apologize for that. Sorry, sir. Like, I'm not trying. It's just the way it is. No, yeah, I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm trying to answer your question. You said the that we're using, illegal. that we're not, not getting, crime. we're paying taxes, I buy a lot of things, you know I what? actually, can I ask you something really fast? Sure. What do you think about you should not be punished for the sins of your father? Because it wasn't our choice. I understand, but blame your father. I agree with you. But. Shame on him. Okay, do you believe that we should not be punished for that though? Well, that's not the issue. I don't make the law. I, I, I will enforce the law. It's illegal under federal law. All it is is a codification of the law. We okay, will enforce it. Well, it is not the law. Now, you can pervert the Constitution all you want. It doesn't work well, okay? Well, not going to listen to this guard. I'm going to get up a debate here. This isn't the place. Expect Pierce, as the president of the self dubbed Tea Party Senate, to emerge with some type of birthright citizenship bill early 2011. Expect Arpaio to send more police officers to train into the 287G program and expect his county-funded citizen armed posse to take shape. Now is the perfect time for the human rights movement in Arizona to shed its allegiances to political chess champions who pander to brown skin ballots. If voting is your thing, develop a grassroots candidate who will not waver on the issue of justice once in office. If protesting is your thing, your schedule should have been full by now. If alternative methods of resistance are your thing, start an independent neighborhood ethnic studies program that directly defies state law, involves masses of people in a critical dialogue about history, and builds the political consciousness of people. Join and participate in community organizations such as Puente that choose not to hang their heads in defeat once they remove their I Voted Today sticker. Make YouTube videos, websites, or songs that highlight the daily injustices and daily resistance happening in communities become part of the growing effort to expose U.S. human rights abuses on the United Nations level through the Universal Periodic Review. But regardless of the route of resistance you take, force your actions to correspond with the justice that you imagine. Peace. The struggle is won.